man what is happening my youtube family of course it is your boy be new i'm coming at you on this friday and first and foremost as always want to send out positive vibrations and blessings to anybody who could be listening now with all that being said we all know that the los angeles lakers were on their season home opener on yesterday back in the confines of their own home downtown los angeles at the staples center taking on none other than the kevin durant led phoenix suns and as we all know by now of course we got notifications on yesterday that the phoenix suns would be without their superstar devin booker because he was dealing with a foot injury what seems to be a stress injury that is something that the phoenix suns must be very precautious with because when you have a foot injury like that that's something that you need to take caution with because if you have a stress fracture in that foot it could really lead to you being out for a significant amount of time and i do not blame the phoenix suns one bit for taking the precautionary measures keeping devin booker out this early on in the season because it's a marathon not a sprint as we all know and of course we already knew that bradley bill had been dealing with a back injury so that's something that you know could keep him out just for a limited amount of time he's just dealing with soreness but i hope he can hopefully he'll return to the fold soon so with that being said we all know that the lakers were heavily favored i believe at a minus eight or minus seven and a half going into the game on yesterday because the people out in Vegas said, hey, you got LeBron James, Anthony Davis, this Lakers team who just came off the Western Conference Finals. They got all these new pieces, and here you have the Phoenix Suns who are without uh, their two other superstars to accompany Kevin Durant. This should be an easy win for the Lakers, but it was not so much that, and we all know the late game heroics from LeBron James that sealed the victory, which we will get into in just a minute, but we got a whole lot of takeaways from this game, so let's just get into it. Before I really want to get into it, let me just go off a sound bite uh, that came from the previous game with LeBron James, uh, with LeBron James uh, telling one of the coaches, I think, uh, during the game when he was mic'd up saying, hey, you do know I can play point right. We got the length. How about put me, Rui, Austin, uh, Wood, and AD out there and just use length because he's like, I'm just out here floating around. So that led many of a hater, of course, to come back and say, hey, you know what? Uh, you know what? LeBron James is selfish. He can't play off the ball. That's he's a coach killer. Oh, we can't have a real point guard. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, we can't do that. So for all you, uh, I won't even say haters, but for all you casuals out there who don't even understand uh, the way the game is played nowadays, who even think that LeBron is somehow ruining that, first and foremost, let's go ahead and roll out the stats real quick, because as we all know, uh, with LeBron on the floor so far in this early season, just two games, but so far with LeBron James on the floor, the Lakers are a plus 29. And without LeBron James on the floor, they are a minus 36. So let's just let that sink in again. Plus 29 with LeBron James on the floor, which means they are handling business quite effectively. And without him on the floor, minus 36 which means they are not handling business effectively and we know last year uh when lebron james was out after they had made the trades at the deadline that the lakers were still able to go out and win some games which was fabulous because you know that was a different lineup that wasn't the what the westbrook pat bev lineup of course that ad was leading to these victories of course even though the haters wanted to say otherwise but at the end of the day i'm going to break down for you the reason why lebron james probably needs to be the point guard and that's just in case we forgot we don't want to put a lot of wear and tear and treads on lebron james's legs and mileage for the season but what we do know is lebron james last time he played point guard for the los angeles lakers was back in 2020 and i don't give a damn about a bubble or anything else because before the bubble even unfolded uh we saw lebron james was the leading assist getter in the nba that season and what is the job of a point guard to do is to get teammates involved and ultimately that is what he did by leading the entire league and assist and i think if lebron james were to play for it again then that's something that can happen i'm not sitting up here saying that lebron james needs to be the starting point guard of the los angeles lakers but what i am saying and i said before the season and i was i was down on d'angelo russell if y'all go back and look at my taste i said listen 
D'Angelo Russell doesn't have what it takes, especially in the playoffs, to be effective because he doesn't have the athleticism to be able to put downhill pressure on defenses. It's just a fact of the matter. And if you look at the Los Angeles Lakers, the way they are constructed, you have two uh, guards, that of Gabe Vincent and D'Angelo Russell, who are not as athletic as the average NBA player. Uh, they get by off skill, which they do have skill, don't get me wrong, but they are lacking the athleticism that of a uh, most NBA point guards that have nowadays. And one thing about Dennis Schroeder, even though you know he played great defense, he wasn't the best finisher as far as a scoring option like maybe a D'Lo is, but he was able to put pressure on the defense and keep the offense in flowing because basically what the NBA has turned into now is you got pick and roll sets and if you don't have pick and roll sets you have point guards or ball handlers who can break down the defense by getting downhill uh causing other players to come over and help defense whether it's on the pick and roll or whether it's just penetration and then kicking back outside to the stronger weak side for wide open threes and that is something that d'angelo russell just seems not to be capable of uh because he doesn't have a great enough athleticism to be able to break down the defense now if you look at the lakers the way they are currently constructed you have three different players one which is uh three three players on the lakers who are the best players on the lakers and of course we all know who the three best players on the lakers are and that is none other than lebron james anthony davis and austin reeves well austin reeves he is a good ball handler and he can break down defenses and he can get downhill and he can create for others but when you have D'Lo in the game or Gabe Vincent in the game, then you have point guards who cannot do so, and then they're just handling the ball too much, and then it, it gets other players like an Anthony Davis or a LeBron James out of their rhythm. And if you sit up here and if you really stop and think about it, if you look and see in that last, what, seven or eight minutes, which we all know that LeBron James played the entire fourth quarter, uh, if you look at it when he went into that ball handling position and late in the game, I don't want this to end up being an issue, but as we can see, Elo did not play really in the in the minutes that mattered in the fourth quarter. They elected to go with Gabe Vincent, and I think that's because he plays off the ball, and that's what basically D'Angelo Russell needs to learn how to do when he's on the floor with LeBron James. And I know you haters are gonna say, LeBron ruins a team because, no, if he had a damn real point guard, then he'd be okay, but guess what? D'Angelo Russell, you're not it, man. You're not it. You, you, hit one three out of what six or seven threes that you took again yesterday if you're not effective on the three ball if you can't break defenses down and get others involved then what are you on the floor for because if you look at lebron james on yesterday he was a plus what 23 or plus 24 again and then you look at the person who had the highest plus minus was none other than christian wood and that lineup with lebron james gabe vincent austin reeves christian wood and anthony davis proved to be an effective lineup because LeBron James was handling the majority of the ball handling responsibilities and that meant he was getting other players involved and the first thing he started doing when he got was when he started running point guard with that eight or nine minute mark left in the fourth quarter the first thing he started doing was feeding Anthony Davis on the post getting Anthony Davis involved and uh, setting pick and rolls with Anthony Davis and when he set those pick and rolls they're just used to it with each other and it's pretty much damn near unstoppable with LeBron James and Anthony Davis on that pick and roll because LeBron James, as you saw in, the, in, in that whole fourth quarter, what did he do? He got the pick, then he split the double on the pick and roll, went to the basket, money, bucket, you understand me? And the next time, same thing. So he able to get downhill. And of course, it's easier with Phoenix because they don't have DeAndre Aiden anymore. And I think that's going to hurt them against a team like the Lakers because LeBron James doesn't have anybody imposing their will as a rim protector because that's just not Nurkic's game. I mean, Nurkic can pass a whole lot better, which you saw he was doing things last night that DeAndre Aiden, of course, was not capable of. But then you trade one thing for another because Nurkic is not going to deter anybody from rim running and get to the rim and dunking on somebody's head because LeBron LeBron James, time in and time out in the fourth quarter, as we saw last night, was able to get to the rim and hit clutch basket after clutch basket. So not only did he take the shot that put the Lakers in the lead, he took the shot that put them up by four. He constantly got to the basket and he was just pretty much unstoppable. Now we saw KD and now you got to give props to KD. KD who had 39 points on yesterday, uh, really because it was nobody else that you could really depend on as far as uh, somebody who can go out and just get you points and get you baskets uh you know you had a kobe who played well uh 
uh, being Gordon, he played well in the absence of Devin Booker. He came out on fire, but that only lasted for so long because the Lakers actually played good defense. The Lakers came out with a quick 7-0 run, and then the next thing you know, the Lakers start bully woofing again, let Phoenix take a double-digit lead, and they cut it to three at halftime, and then the Lakers turned it up again in the fourth quarter and only held them, I think, to 12 points, which is what they should have been doing the entire time by playing great defense. But what I do want to focus on is that of Christian Wood, who had a plus 26, I believe, and him and Anthony Davis out there was great because they could build a wall for Kevin Durant and Christian Wood could take on, which Christian Wood, as we all know, has never been known as a good defender, but Christian Wood uh, played pretty good defense on Kevin Durant, knowing that he had uh, AD behind him to come give help. So he would just chase, chase, chase. And he knew that, you know, if KD was to get around him, he had AD come. And then it was on KD to figure out which way we were going to beat, beat, which way he could beat the Lakers. And what the Lakers conceded was, hey, we're not going to let Kevin Durant beat us. It's going to have to be somebody else. So we're going to build a wall, a fortress, whatever we got to do, and double, triple team him, come weak side help, whatever we need to do in order to make him struggle, and he did. And you could tell by the end of the game, he was gassed because Kevin Durant, well, first of all, it is only the second game of the season, so you have to get into rhythm. You got to get into playing shape. I don't care what anybody says. You can work out all you want all summer, but when it comes time to get on the floor, it's going to be a little bit different when you are in game shape, and that's something that you got to see how great LeBron James is, even after what year 21, just the way he's able to get up and down the court. And if you're talking about closing, LeBron James last night in the fourth quarter had, I think, 10 points, two rebounds, two steals, a block, all within the fourth quarter. So when it came down to crunch time and taking care of business, we all see we all see what happened. And uh, LeBron James was able to close the deal. Kevin Durant wasn't. Now, we saw Kevin Durant did get the end one. He took it to Austin Reeves. He got the end one, but he wasn't able to convert. He missed a free throw. I think a little bit of that was fatigue. And then after he missed that free throw, what happened? Look! LeBron James went back down the court and was able to finish time in and time out. LeBron James, who only had 13, wasn't having a great game, finished the game with 21 points, eight rebounds, and nine assists. Almost had the triple dub. And at the end of the day, a lot of haters out here want to say, I see him on Twitter talking about, oh, uh, AD carry LeBron, 31 points and 10 rebounds, 31 points, 12 rebounds, or whatever. Not even realizing that basically, and I'm not knocking AD, but, you know, he basically would have had 26 points. He got four garbage free throws at the end. It really could have been LeBron free throws. Uh, not saying that it mattered because he's not trying to step pad, but AD, you know, he's trying to run the clock out at the end. I noticed he didn't pass the ball around. You're supposed to pass it like a hot potato just to run out the clock, but he elected to hold on to the ball so he can go to the line, which is good because he knocked down all four free throws. Now, if he'd done that and missed the free throws, that would have been different. So I think LeBron was looking at him like, hey, man, you could have let me get them four free throws. I could have ended up with 25, 8, and 9. You know what I mean? But nobody cared about numbers. And they asked LeBron James after the game how uh, AD is handling it. And he had some explicative, explicit words to say. He said they don't give an ish. KD don't give an ish. KD is not on social media, blah, blah, blah. So he's not really concerned. And we know AD is going to get better as the season progresses. Uh, you know, that's just going to come as far as him getting into rhythm, him getting shots at the elbow. But with a team like uh, the Phoenix Suns, I really don't think even once Devin Booker and Bradley Beal gets back, I don't think they pose a threat to the Lakers because I don't think they match up against the Lakers very well because the Lakers are able to get downhill and attack. And, of course, the Lakers shot atrocious from the three-point line. Again, I think they were 5 out of 29 yesterday. Think about it. They was even 10 out of 29. I think uh, – my guy, Torian Prince, who came out and had such a good game, he was 0 for 5 for the game, zero points, laid a goose egg. He didn't have any points. Let's just say he would have made a couple threes. If, if they would only hit 10 out of them 29 threes, that's five more threes. That's 15 points. And you're talking about a game that's not even close. But, of course, the Lakers need to get into rhythm. I think the addition of Vanderbilt coming back will be good. I like Cam Reddish, what he did as far as his minutes. But I think Christian Wood is going to be a big pickup for the Lakers if he can continue to attack the defensive glass the way he is and clean up the glass and deny second chance opportunities for the opposing team. That is going to be crucial because that's going to help him and AD. Uh, that's going to take a lot of pressure off AD as far as the rebounding and what AD is expected to do on the team. And then, of course, Christian Wood is capable of hitting the three ball. He's capable of using his length. So I think he's only going to get better. Achimura didn't have such a great game. I think he only played 11 or 12 minutes, so he still needs to get into a rhythm. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, you know, he had a decent game, but down the stretch time, he the Lakers elected not to go with him. Let's see how that affects him mentally because we already know they set him out in the playoffs last year because he ever came unplayable.
unplayable. And that's because he lacks the size. And I think the Lakers gave him the money he needed and probably had a talk with him and said, listen, you got to get better on defense and you have to do this and you have to do that. And if not, by the trade deadline, we're going to get you out of here. And if the Lakers could somehow package, let's say, a Rui Achimura and a uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell together to get a great upgrade at point, I can't really think of anybody right now off the top of my head that would be that great upgrade. But uh, the Lakers need somebody who can actually – get downhill and break down defenses and get other players involved because as of right now the only players they have that can do that is a LeBron James and Austin Reeves because no other ball handling players are really breaking down the defenses and uh, spreading the ball around like that and kicking out to open shooters you know Gabe Vincent he just doesn't have the athleticism to do so uh, you know D'Angelo Russell he's too small they're just too small they don't have what it takes to be able to do so but at the end of the day uh, maybe he can turn it around and get better. There's still a lot of season left. Uh, but like I said, I never had a whole lot of faith in D'Angelo Russell. So at the end of the day, you know, if LeBron James needs to play point guard for the majority of time that he's on the floor, then so be it. You know, let D'Angelo Russell play off the ball. Because if you notice, when he makes his threes, he makes threes when he's standing still. Not when he's dribbling, not when he's stepping back, not when he's dribbling down the court and pulling up. It's usually stand still threes just get kicked back out to him. He doesn't have a problem making those. So with that said, then, you know, maybe that's just what he needs to do. But at the end of the day, you know, LeBron James had a great game. AD had a great game. And the Lakers were able to pull out the victory, regardless of who was on the court or not. That just is what it is. I know they were lacking their superstars, but a victory is a victory. They faced the Phoenix Suns four times because they're in the same conference. And you never know when it comes playoff time, this could be a tiebreaker or anything. So you want to go out and win those games. And you notice LeBron James was not on the minute restriction yesterday. They said before the game it was not a hard cap. It was a soft cap. And they want to try to keep him to 29 to 30 minutes. But if they need him, then they will play him. And that's exactly what they did. Darvin Ham alluded to in the press conference yesterday that he let he had timeouts to use. And he used those timeouts. Look at this guy, man. going to sit up here and try to have a red job. And that's another thing. I've been so busy, man, just running back and forth. Man, y'all send blessings and positive blessings out to me for my son, man. Went down to his uh, hearing today. Unfortunately, he was denied, so he might have to be in there for another year. But, you know, he's getting closer to getting out, man. We're going to continue to pray for him and send him positive vibrations, man. But at the end of the day, you know, this has been your boy B, though. And I just want to wish everybody positive vibrations. Y'all do the same for me. We got a lot to talk about when it comes to the Lakers every single day. It was a great game with the Milwaukee Bucks on yesterday. It was game time at the end of the game. I want to say Philadelphia played a great game. And I'm telling y'all, that Kelly Oubre dude, man. When, when did he start hitting threes like that? Because dude was straight trash from outside. But now all of a sudden, he's just hitting threes like he's Steph Curry with the shot. But anyway, we'll talk about that more another time because I'm unprepared. Really, y'all, I'm up here holding this phone with my hand while I'm trying to do a video, which is quite amazing that I'm doing this. You understand me? Breaking down and giving y'all this knowledge. You understand me? So if you haven't done so already, hit that like, hit that share, and most importantly, hit that bell for the notifications so you know when your boy is on. But just know every day after the Lakers, it's going to be a show unless something tragic came up or something really to where I couldn't get to it. So, you know, even though I'm traveling on the road, coming back, you know, on a five hour drive, I gotta do what I gotta do, man. But I had to come to y'all and break this down for you. I wanted to do it earlier, but was unable to do so, man. I'm living really off three or four hours of sleep, so I had to do what I had to do. But at the end of the day, man, this has been your boy B New. And as always, I wanna say right on to the real and much love to these haters. I'm out.